and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on. For some Mono Green Tron, our first time trying it with M20 in the format. And we have two pretty cool additions to this deck. One, we got Vivian. As I've talked about before, Vivian mm -hmm. is my favorite card from M20. I think this card is really, really strong. And I think it's a, a great um, mid mid curve addition to the deck that whenever we are playing all of these cheap creatures, either our mana creatures or our explore creatures, I think Vivian is a really good follow up to put counters on the creatures, make them big. Um, you know, give Wild Growth Walker Trample is really nice. Give us a removal spell also, because, you know, we're kind of light on removal spells. So Vivian does that as well. So I really like Vivian as an addition to this deck. And then also Voracious Hydra, another removal spell, Hydra, that can kind of fit anywhere we need it to on the curve um, and just be very versatile. That's what Voracious Hydra is, is versatile. So I like both of those additions to the deck. Um, so we have some more mid game. You know, our, our early game with the Explore Creatures and our Mana Ramp is good. Our late game with Nissa and Ugin is very good. And, you know, Karn getting other things. Late game's good. It was kind of like the mid game is what the deck was really struggling with and interaction and uh, removal. And so I, I really like Vivian and Voracious Hydra in this deck. So I wanted to try it out. So we're going to be playing ranked over here today. Our other leagues have kind of taken a while. Um, so we're, we're just going to be playing three matches of ranked instead of five here with Mono Green Tron. Uh, so yeah, we're going to, so that's why we're doing, that's also why I'm doing ranked instead of a league because we're just going to be playing the three matches, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, our Karn package now includes a Golos as a new card that we can kind of uh, help curve because like if we, if we play Karn with four mana and then on five mana, let's say like maybe we have like one extra land, but we don't have another one to get to Ugin. We don't have a Nissa. We can like minus the car and go grab Golos, and then the next turn play the Golos, uh, get another land out, and and so on. So I think this is a good curve stopper for us to, uh, or curve filler to be able to get with Karn, and the Golos can go fine like Blast Zone if we're playing against Mono Blue, uh, or Field of Ruin if we're playing against Control if we need one of those, or of course just another Forest. Um, we can get any of those in play. Um, so yeah, that's our deck. Like it pretty good here. Yeah, I I have played the Proliferate Land in this deck before, Karn's Bastion, and it it was okay. But but honestly, I think the Blast Zone would be better, especially with like Mono Blue being popular again. I I think the Blast Zone could be a really important card. Just having interaction is important, and that's that's what we have now with the Vivians, the Voracious Hydras. Get a third Blast Zone. But yeah, I have tried two Blast Zone one Karn's Bastion before. And it was it was fine, but it wasn't really that impactful. Of course, we're playing green, so we get all these Veil of Summers against the Counterspell decks. And besides that, we're just trying to ramp. So let's give this a try. All right, so Mono Green Tron. <clears throat> Mobilize District instead of Field of Ruin now that everybody plays Basics. Well, people still have, like, Ascanta that we want to blow up. And we have the Crucible Worlds in the sideboard. Because while everybody has Basics, they don't have very many. And we can grab Crucible with Karn and Field of Ruin a bunch. And try to cut people off colors. It's possible that that... Um, that scenario is too far-fetched and I should just be playing mobilized districts it's certainly possible that would free up a sideboard slot for us as well From the smallest ant to the largest hydra, nature is... Vivian's also pretty nice because Vivian's another card that we can minus and, and, you know, we can go grab Meteor Golem with Vivian also. It's pretty nice. Uh... 
Ah, blue green flash. Well, we got four Vela Summers in our sideboard. Mm, this is why I don't like people. This will be fun to watch. Mm. <laughs> you were lucky to get that close. So yeah, we'll have the blast zone that will kill the spectral sailor later on. I already played land. Um, this will be fun to watch. Lucky for me, I like a fight. <laughs> Stomping time. All right, so they won't be able to kill Vivian. Now with the Sailor out of there. So they can get a 3-3. You know, certainly hoping for no Trickster. Well, I guess you Trickster really doesn't really stop enemy. Paradise Druid. Good old Hexproof. So they ha they're going to have to have another blocker. My, my, how you've grown. Vivian's just so good. Yeah, the Trickster could have taken away Trample after I attacked. That's true. It could could do that. <laughs> that is the most feels bad man chump I have ever seen. That is a pretty feels bad man chump. Veil of Summer. I think that's it. Do I have, like are I'm thinking about just taking out Karn? Yeah, these artifacts aren't really too necessary. So yeah, let's actually just cut the Karn, bring in the Veil of Summers. Um, also cut. What's the last card we cut? Is it a WoW Growth Walker, a Branch Walker? Golos is a good card to grab with four mana Karn. Like, you know, when you have four mana, you play Karn, you minus, you grab Golos. The next, you know, next turn you have five mana, you get to play Golos. You have a, a solid artifact creature that also ramps you. It's a good card. 
We could take out an Ugin, I suppose. Ugin's so strong. But I guess we could take out one of them. But it's so good. All right, fine. We'll take out one Ugin. Yeah, beating Flash game one and now being able to bring in four Veil of Summers. That's certainly pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's not... There's no Veil of Summer, but I don't think we just, like, mulligan a, an okay hand if there's no Veil of Summer. Well, obviously, drawing land land is not ideal. Alright, so they scry to the top very quickly. I'm going to be field of ruining that thing. Maybe we'll get out of our land pocket, you know, drawing three forests for draw steps one, two, and three. <clears throat> Not what we want to be drawing at all, so maybe that shuffle will help our land pocket also. What? That's a great trade for me. Ambusher was definitely the best possible card my opponent could have. That's for sure. We finally didn't draw a land. Fifth draw step. It was a mana creature. What? Why are they attacking me? What are they doing? That was just 10 damage right there. I'm at 10. Prove your skills, and I can teach you. Do not challenge a raging river. Not sold playing Mu Yanling one is worth it or just in the deck. I guess I'll like somewhere else. Not sold that that's just better than getting a three three of just not playing anything.
wary of the ground you walk on. Mm, sailor is great. Well, certainly hoping that this Hydra plan works. They get three cards. Yep. You know, card for Sailor, card for Turn. They can draw another card off Sailor. Really hoping they don't have a counter spell in three cards. However, <laughs> they've only played what they've only had one counter spell this whole game. So I have to say that's not very likely that they don't have another counter spell. Resolve. Wow. Fight this thing. Boo. Ugh. Behold, nature's true power. I am fragile. All right, let's see if this the hydro works this time. Yeah, thrash. Yeah, I've always liked thrash threat. It's a good card. What are they, what are they doing playing these moves? It would actually just be better if they just didn't play a card. And get a 3-3. Three, three. That actually would have been better. They would have just drawn a card with Sailor, that would have been better. Getting a 3 3. And an extra card. I did not think we were going to be winning that game, to be honest. But Mu Yanling really saved us. All right, we're 1 0. This is a heck of a card. Ooh, nice little start here. We can have turn three, we can have a Hydra for four. So we could have a turn three, we could have an eight nine trampler, or we could have a four or five to fight something. Yeah, Tron is reference to it's it's on it's a reference to the modern deck uh, that plays Karns. Basically, just saying shorthand is we're a big mana deck that's playing Karn. I guess that's 
And that's what it it's kind of that's what it kind of means. Yeah, we could be playing Ceratops in the sideboard. I'm I'm just going with just the autumn the the Vela Summers instead. I'm going that route because I think Vela Summer is just better against more decks. Also, where Ceratops is kind of just it's great against Flash, but it's kind of just Flash, like Flash and Mono Blue. But Summer is great against both of those decks plus the mass manipulation decks. Alright, so looks like we are playing against... Looks like we're playing against Nexus. So let's get our fastest clock we can against Nexus. Yeah, that would have been nice to have the green ley line, that's for sure. This opening. So what are they shock in for? All right, so as Kanta trigger, keep the card on top. Ah, uh, put in the graveyard. I was hoping they were gonna put the keep the card on top. Blow up this blast zone. So obviously, if, if they pop blast zone here, they they die. So I guess they could. No, they couldn't pop. Yeah, they could pop blast zone. I guess and still have the fog, but. Sweet, no fog, no win. Boom, 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 boom. Um, is Vale of Summer good here? Probably not, actually. That was just fun. This is this is the kind of matchup we don't want to be facing. The combo matchup. We are just pretty lucky to have be on the play and have a turn three eight nine. To be honest. This is the... Oh, man. Godfaro Statue. If it's only at the beginning of your opponent's upkeep, they lose a life. And if it was not just your end step. So Karn basically just goes and grabs Spy Glasses. That's about all Karn does is grab Spy Glasses. Um, I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to keep the Karns instead of the Spy Glasses because one Karn can grab two Spy Glasses instead of it just being one Spy Glass, you know, because it gets to minus twice. So that's why I'm not doing the swap. Blech. 
I don't really like Wild Growth Walker here, though. I think Wild Growth Walker is kind of slow, and that's so I took those out. Uh, this deck doesn't activate Golos. Well, I guess this is the key. So one Druid. And then I guess Karn? Karn or Hydra? I guess Karn. So it's like, would you rather have a 6-7 or have two spy glasses? I uh, love you too, Georgie. Draw a land. Draw a land. Certainly help when we draw a land. Ah, boo. Okay, stop messing with my stop messing with my headphones, okay? Stop. Stop. No. Stop. My headphones. Oh, I'm supposed to put these. Stop. That's an unfortunate turn for us. Every story is an opportunity for new data. Seek and find. What? Veil of Summer? But that doesn't... That doesn't do anything. I'm a green deck. I mean, I guess they thought that I was, that I just didn't draw blue mana last turn, last game. Thought I'm blue green. <laughs> the storied past holds our future. Thanks so much, Joy. All right, I got you for last on Saturday for a donation deck. Awesome, I'll write it down. I protect that which cannot protect itself. Harness the elements. Thank you so much. We had we played some dinos earlier today.
Okay, so definitely do not like where we are at. Ugh. You know, them them having we'll being at Tamio just tons of life and having Tamio and, and Escanta. Very rough. If they don't have a Nexus though, we have a slight chance. <laughs> yeah, this is still standard. You know, we're playing some Mono Green Tron. I'm just doing three matches in ranked with the deck today, with it being a little, little later. Our other leagues took a while. All right, well, that's probably game. Aid your research. All right, I'm giving it to him. All right, let's see if we can keep seven instead of going to five Ugh, here on the play. That was my first time to actually play the dinos earlier today uh, with Marauding Raptor. That was my first time to play Marauding Raptor. Uh, green, red, mid range. Um, it was the deck that, that I was playing earlier that was like my most consistent deck. And that one probably is still. Hey, what's up, Narinen? Ten months. You are amazing. Thank you so much. Time just flies. Yeah, yeah, I definitely thought about that. Gravestone preventing Tamiya minus. I don't think that that's better than... I was I was debating in my head whether Gravestone preventing Tamiya minus better than Veil of Summer preventing the bounce stuff. And, and I don't think so. I think I'd rather counter the bounce spells. Golos is in the sideboard for just whenever we need a creature. Close your eyes and listen to the sounds of the wild. We're fit enough to survive. I think Golas is a really good Karn minus target on curve to ramp you and get you a good body. Let us have a storied battle worth retelling. Hmm. I know I noted this somewhere. Time. 
My research has been compromised. Oh, I just realized I'm one... One power short from presenting lethal here. With an attack all out. This will be fun to watch. No counter spell. Curiosity and wonder drives. No bounce spell. Not petty wars. This All right, reclamation down. Is unwritten. Okay, reclamation back. Yay! All right, so what I was going to do here is I was going to Vivian minus five and go grab Meteor Golem, and use, you know, we had we had five or we had seven mana there between the Paradise Druid that like both the Jaylight and the Branch Walker were lethal attackers. So assuming they had a fog, and they would have fogged my attack, I would have gone and, and had Vivian go grab Meteor Golem and Meteor Golem destroy the Wilderness Reclamation. All right, two and zero. Oh. Which is, will you be happy to see the explore mechanic rotate out, or do you enjoy it? I'm just, I'm pretty lukewarm on it, honestly. I'm not going to be happy or sad that it rotates out. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of whatever. It's kind of a thing, you know, it's, it's just, it's a thing. This deck's very consistent. And the Voracious Hydra and the Vivian have both looked very good so far in this deck. I think they've been really good additions in M20. I'm going to have to play a, a longer league with this deck later. And honestly, if we play a fast match here, maybe we get another one in. This is, these have been some fast matches. Um, they don't have very many cards over there. I kind of want to just Voracious Hydra kill this Land War Elf. Yeah, let's do that. It's a little baby Chupacabra. Bleh. That was the worst case scenario. Whenever I did that. That was certainly the worst case scenario. I was like, well, they could just play Land Riz Risen Reef. It's probably the worst thing in the format they could have in. Oh, well. Oh, my gosh. Well, they, they're back in this now. So I'm taking up and not minusing because with this being a Sultai deck, 
Darn. Thought here is, <clears throat> you know, they're likely a Command the Dread Horde deck. Killing Risen Reef means it comes back with Command the Dread Horde. And I really didn't want an Ugin to come back. Also, because if I if I minus the Ugin, then their Risen Reef gets to attack and kill my Ugin. So I didn't want that to happen. Nice, good job, Royal Flush. I will aid you. The land fights for us. Another be gone, interloper. All right. Well, now we got a good, good clock and everything. We'll make them not be able to get two good blocks in there. Yeah, so far the most successful Grixis deck I've played was the Grixis midrange that we played earlier today. You know, it says 3-3, but we really had some some bad luck um, with a couple of those. Like, one ma one of them just wasn't even a match. Like, we mulled the five and then got disconnected and couldn't, um, couldn't sideboard and couldn't decide whether or not to keep our hand. They just kept our hand, and then, you know, we just didn't have lands. And so, like... Really, it was like three and two, and then another another one of those was was mana troubles, also another loss, and a fixed fixed that mana base a little bit. You know, just basically added another black source. There wasn't enough black sources in that deck. So that the deck played a lot better than the than the three three record would indicate. Hmm. So Cajun Gravestone are like what I want here against the uh, Command the Dread Horde deck. This may be a time where I'm supposed to cut either Wild Growth Walkers or Explore Creatures. Like something like if they kill my Wild Growth Walker or Explore Creatures, bring them back. That could be bad. I'm going to bring in Cajun Leave Gravestone. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to cut one walker. I guess I could be playing Veil of Summer. We'll do that also and cut the walkers. Now, uh, tomorrow, Epic, uh, I'm going to be playing a, another Grixis control deck tomorrow where I'm going to have Chandra and Narset, and I'm, I'm excited to see how that plays out. So, so far, that one from today was, was the best that we've played, but I'm going to also play a newer version tomorrow also and give it a... Give that a try. Hmm. <clears throat> hey, Gatsby, good evening. Whoa, Gatsby with the tier three sub. Yet again, eight months. Y'all get some hype in the chat. Thank you so much there, Gatsby. All right, if you didn't realize the reason why I kept Silent Gravestone in the sideboard against a Command the Dreadhorde deck, where it's like one of my most important cards, is because Karn can grab it. And so by keeping in the sideboard, I'm basically playing three copies because I have three Karns in the main deck. I would still brought it in the Grafdigger's Cage, so we have like four, basically four copies of main deck Command the Dreadhorde Hate. Um, 
but I wanted it one to split. Wanted to certainly keep one in the sideboard. Didn't want to just bring them both in. Hmm. Thanks, Gatsby. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. Get him. If I knew my next card down was a land, I would have kept that Veil of Summer. And this is a perfect time for the Golos. You know, we're, we'll be able to play Golos next turn. Wow, ditching? Huh. I just ditch Jade Light Ranger? How does that even make sense? Like, so they gotta have another Jade Light Ranger. They have to have another Jade Light Ranger. So, the playing the Nissa, we'd make a five-five. Fit enough to survive. I will not lose another friend. We're playing Golas. We get a five-seven. But still, even obviously they didn't have a land drop. They didn't play a land last turn. But even without having a land drop, Jade Light is a is a really, really solid card to play here. So I'm assuming they have another Jade Light in hand. If they're willing to get rid of that. Surprised about the Ritual of Soot, though. A little surprised there. Hmm. That kills my statue. Holding this grudge, we will not fail. Behold, nature's true power. I am ancient and wise. He so by the way, I just realized that Grafdigger's Cage and Ugin are a terrible match. I just realized these two cards do not work at all. Awaken. I'm I'm gonna just chump block with this cage. Cause so Cage says that, that creature cards uh um in creature cards like in libraries can't enter the battlefield. And actually what 
Well, I don't know. This is no. This is exile the top card of your library face down, and then you make a. Okay, never mind. That's different. Because like with when when you would like be able to morph your top card, which is something that uh, Whisperwood Elemental does. Like Whisperwood Elemental, I don't know. It's it's worded a little different. Grafter's Cage shuts down Whisperwood Elemental. It shuts down like the morph creature entering. You know, like morphs the top card of your library. But I guess. Maybe this does work. There, because it says exile the top card, and then you make a token, and then you put the... Yeah, so that that actually does... So yeah, because Whisperwood Elemental just says you manifest the top card of your library, which manifest means make it a 2-2 morph creature. So yeah, it's... Ex yeah, so it... It would work. Your quest is futile. All right. Well, you will not threaten this world. Do I have enough to do all this? This takes eleven mana. Or let's see. going to take 13 mana. Until you have lived as a statue, do not call to me of pigeons. Evil cannot withstand a righteous army. The land shall conquer you. Itself, and that's game. So now we have now we have two God Pharaoh statues in play. So their spells cost four more to cast. And as you can see, they only have four mana. So they can't actually play anything. And there we go. <laughs> totally fair. Totally fair. Pretty sweet looking deck here. Yeah, it gets us pretty close to 10 here. All right, so yeah, I said we play three matches. That's That seemed like a really great great time to uh, stop. Um, yeah, the statue was a 6-6 because of Karn's plus one. So, so what just happened there? Karn's plus one uh, turned the non-creature artifact, turned the statue into a creature. So yeah, actually just playing the Graph Digger's Cage and using that to be able to chump block to keep Ugin alive. That let us get all the mana because Ugin made stuff cost two less. Nissa gave us a lot of mana. Honestly, this deck was really impressive. Very impressive showing here. We'll have to play this again here uh, in the next couple of days. Because um, yeah, we had like the Voracious Hydra and the Vivian. Both of those cards were awesome for us. So those those cards really fit in the middle of this curve, just filled it in nicely. There, um, yeah, good good looking deck here. There, um, yeah, pretty yeah, pretty good showing. All right, six one nine wants me to crack a pack. We'll do it because that was a a good league. There, good good three matches. We'll crack a pack before we get out the door here. Yeah, that was a sweet run. That deserves it. Hey, Legion Zen. That's that's an awesome card. That should be my fourth copy. Very good there. Yeah, I'm going to put this under my favorites. Um there. This was this was really sweet. That was a it was a fun deck to play too. I liked it quite a bit. Um so as far as uh, any any kind of changes that maybe to the deck, honestly maybe Crucible is not worth it. It's it's certainly possible that Crucible Field of Ruin these days everybody's playing a lot of basics. Um I could see getting rid of Crucible. And if you want if there's like another artifact you want to be playing or another sideboard card that you want, I think Crucible is the easiest card to take out of the deck. Um yeah. So if if you want something else, there you go. I have the Rex Age basically because of that Nexus matchup. And for Mono White, I have just one, one Rex Age in here. But yeah. Yeah. 
I think I think Crucible is the worst card in the deck in the 75. I think that's the worst one. All right. Uh, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate it. But thank you so much for uh, watching Mono Green Tron. Um, I really appreciate that and uh, hope to see you for the next video. Have a good night.